This is part two of our Yamaha Banshee bottom end rebuild. If you need more information for disassembly, check out part one. Now that we have all the major individual parts of our engine disassembled, we need to go through and clean everything. Now there still may be some dowel pins and some stuff that you need to remove, but we need to clean everything really well so that we can inspect everything thoroughly. Using a good degreaser or a contact cleaner to clean everything usually works pretty well. Now that we have all of our engine parts clean and dry, we need to do our inspection. We'll start with the engine cases. Now the mating surface on both engine cases is probably the most important thing along with the base gasket, but we'll get that, to that in just a minute. Anytime you have like major tranny issues or crankshaft issues where they've blown up or something's broke, you definitely want to look over the cases for cracks um, and, and damaged areas that would cause problems down the road. Um, but you don't want to confuse a casting flaw for a crack. So if you look inside the transmission area, these are casting flaws. So don't get that mistaken for a crack in the case. The next thing you want to look for is every place where a bearing or a seal rests, along with the areas where a shaft or a moving part goes through the actual engine case. A lot of times those, are, those will become oblong, making the shaft move back and forth in there and create some issues that way. The last thing we need to inspect on our engine cases are, is the cylinder mating surface. Now this is the most important surface that you need to pay attention to. You definitely want it flat, you don't want to clean it too vigorous and take off material, otherwise you'll cause an air leak down the road. The way you can check that is you can get a machinist edge and a feeler gauge and refer to your service manual for the spec on that to see if it's still within spec. The next thing we want to inspect is our transmission. Now what you want to look for there is you want to go through all of the teeth and make sure that there's no cracks or chips and that they're all there. The next thing you want to look at is the function of every, everything. You want to make sure that your sliders move back and forth freely and check out the, the dogs on each gear that they um, are not rounded off too much and also your freewheeling gears. Now while you're on the counter shaft and main shaft you also want to check out the bearings make sure they're moving freely. We're going to go ahead and replace them on this transmission for this rebuild but that's something that you definitely want to inspect and you can reuse. The next thing you want to look at is the shift fork. Now the shift forks have pads on both sides of the shift fork and that rides right in your sliding gears and so you want to look at the inside of the sliding gear and the pad and make sure that it's not worn too far there. There is generally a measurement in your service manual that gives you a width on that that you can refer to. The next thing you want to look at is the shift drum. Now the shift drum controls your shift forks which when you shift your uh, machine it will change from gear to gear. Now on the shift drum there's not a lot to it other than this one has a bearing, sometimes they don't. And then they have these guides where the shift fork rides in. Usually they don't have a lot of wear there, but it's something you definitely want to look at. The last thing on the shift drum is the shift detent and shift mechanism. Now, a lot of times if you're having a, have your transmission kick out of gear, this is the culprit for the most part. So that's something that you definitely want to make sure is working correctly um, as they break pretty easily. The last thing on a transmission is the shift shaft. These things take a lot of abuse, whereas you know, you're just pounding through gears and these will get bent um, or wear in the case or even break the end off. So definitely want to check out that. Now, if you need more information on transmissions, we have a really good how-to video where we break down a complete transmission and go through everything with a more in-depth inspection and what to look for. Um, let's go ahead and replace the bearings on this. They're pretty easy. They just slide right off and uh, we can go ahead and replace it with these brand new ones um, from All Balls. Okay, so I have my clutch and my top end here. Now these don't pertain to the bottom end rebuild video, but it only makes sense since you have your engine apart to go ahead and rebuild your top end and freshen up your clutch. 
and we've got two really good videos that go in depth on the inspection and what parts you can reuse and replace and how to do that. And you should check that out if you need that information. Now today for this video, we're gonna go ahead and replace the clutch and rebuild the top end. Now I've got the last few components that we need to inspect besides the crankshaft. Now we'll start with the flywheel. Flywheel, there's not much that can go on here other than it can come apart. Uh, you definitely want to check it out and make sure that it's solid um, and that nothing's going on uh, wrong with it. Now the important part about the flywheel is the attachment to the crankshaft. Now it, it's attached with a nut and a keyway. Now you need to inspect the keyway. A lot of times these will shear off and you could cause some problems down the road. Um, so just be aware of that. Now on this side we have our primary gear, we have our clutch basket gear, we have our idler gear and our kickstart spindle. Now what these all have in common is that they work together and they are meshed together by teeth. So we need to inspect those teeth and make sure that there's no cracks and chips and there's not a lot of free play in those. Otherwise we just need to go ahead and replace them. Now particularly on the primary gear, now it, it, it's attached to the crankshaft with a nut and a keyway and you definitely need to make sure that the keyway is in good shape. Now the other part about the primary gear that you need to check out is it rests right inside of the oil seal that keeps the transmission oil out of the crankcase. Now this gear can wear some grooves into it from the oil seal and if they get too deep, even if you replace the oil seal, they still could potentially suck transmission oil through it. So if those get too deep, go ahead and just replace that. That's definitely something you want to inspect. Now on the other side of the crankshaft is a oil seal that keeps um, excess oxygen out of the crankcase as well. And that's pretty important and it will wear a groove on your crankshaft itself. And if that gets too uh, worn away, obviously if you replace the seal, it still could potentially have an air leak. Um, so then you just have to replace the crankshaft. So just be aware of that. Now, anytime you handle your crankshaft, it's also not a bad idea to just go ahead and put uh, the nuts on the end of the crankshaft so that they're protected. Just in case something rolls into it or you bump it, you don't damage the threads. Okay, so the last thing we need to inspect and the, probably the most important component is the crankshaft. Now, there's a few tools that we're gonna need to do that. You need to get some V-blocks so that it can hold the crankshaft solid and you are able to rotate it very smoothly. And that's the first thing you'll need. You'll also need a dial indicator, a caliper, and some filler gauges. Now to, to measure, the, sorry, the first things that we need to measure is the crank cheeks. We want to measure the overall width of each cheek and then the overall width of both cheeks. And we'll just use our caliper to do that. Um, and we'll simply just find the fat part of the cheek and measure that and then refer to our uh, service manual for that spec. Now this one is slightly out of spec. Let's check this one. Now this one's in spec. Let's go ahead and do the overall width of the, both of them. And this one is in spec as well. So that's one, one measurement that you'll need to do. The next one is you need to take your feeler gauges and we need to go ahead and find out the gap between the connecting rod and the crankshaft. So you simply just get uh, a feeler gauge and you slide it in between the side until it's a nice snug fit, but not too loose. Okay, so this one is within spec. Let's go ahead and check the other one. A little too tight. There we go. And that one's too loose. Okay, so that one's within spec as well. The next thing we need to inspect is the connecting rod free play. Now what that means exactly is it's a rocking motion on the top side of the connecting rod back and forth. So we'll simply just set up our dial indicator so that the dial gauge is sticking right on the side of the upper part of the connecting rod. And then we'll simply just wobble it back and forth and that's how we will get our reading. Now we'll just repeat that process on the other connecting rod and then refer to our service manual to see if they're both within spec. Now with these two measurements we found that both of the connecting rods are out of spec. The other thing that you can inspect is if you just simply take the connecting rod and try and pull straight up on it and down to see if there's any uh, free play in the bearing up and in the up and down motion. Now you absolutely don't want any at all and so if you do have some then that's another indicator that you would definitely need to replace your crankshaft or have it rebuilt. 
Now while we have our dial indicator out, let's go ahead and check our crankshaft run out. That essentially means we want to find out if the crankshaft is true. Now to do that, we want to measure both ends of our crankshaft and then we will measure both of the outer bearings as well. Now the reason you want to measure the bearing is because if there's a problem going on with the bearing, it will walk on the crankshaft. Now the measurements that we had got, on this side we got six thousandths of an inch and on this side we got zero. Now as far as the bearings, we got four thousand on this side and one thousand on this side. So essentially what that's telling me is that this side of the crankshaft is out of true and it's it's probably vibrating quite a bit inside the engine cases. Now if any one of these items is out of spec, you're definitely going to need to do something about it. There's a couple options. You can rebuild the crankshaft if you have those tools and you know how, or you could simply just send your crankshaft off to a machine shop and have them rebuild it, or just replace the whole thing altogether. Now nine times out of ten, that's really the route to go because everything's new. And you don't have to wait for a machine shop to do their work. So this crank obviously is junk, so we're going to go ahead and replace it with a brand new one for this bottom end rebuild. This is part two of our Yamaha Banshee bottom end rebuild. If you need more information for disassembly or assembly, check out our other videos in this series.